welcome to episode 27 of my knitting podcast. Again, I think I did in my last episode. I thought, I think I said that I will be back uh, sooner, and I got busy again. Yeah, that's what happens when you're having fun. I had quite a lot of fun. I have done so many different things than knitting, and it was lovely. So I took a little bit of a break of podcasting again, and I also didn't knit that much, but I still have quite a lot of to show to you because. Well, the break of four months uh, was so long and I have so many things from that break that I thought it would be time to uh, film this episode. I have seen that there's quite a few new viewers on this channel, so a very warm welcome. I hope you enjoy uh, my podcast and I'm really happy to see you here. And of course, for everybody who's coming back and for everybody who left me such lovely comments, thank you so much. It's great to see you. I mean, I always read all the uh, comments down below. Uh, sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to answer, I'll be honest, but I still read them and I really much appreciate them. And I will get back to them, all of them. I'll try my best. <laughs> Uh, before I start with my knitting content, I just wanted to give a very quick introduction to my new viewers, just because there have been quite a few ones that have joined this uh, channel lately. So, uh, my name is Anastasia, I'm a knitter based in Iceland. I have recently moved back here, I lived here previously, but then for a time of uh, two and a half years I lived in England. And, but I'm originally German, so I grew up in Germany, but I have like a multicultural background. My mom is from Chile, from South America, so yeah, quite a, it's, it's quite a mess. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been back in Iceland now for, I don't know, three, four months? And I'm loving it, I'm really, really happy to be back. Um, there's yeah, so many good things that came out of it, so I'm really excited to be here. I have a really nice job, I have uh, new and old friends back here, and I have had a lot of time to do like my hobbies as, as well, so I've been knitting a little bit, but I've also done other things. So I will talk about that a bit later in at the end of the episode, um, and I'll start with the knitting content now. I have my notes over here, so excuse me if I look back and forth, uh, but let's start with the first finished object. The first finished object is the one that I'm wearing, uh, like I very often do. <laughs> I like to show off my latest finished object, and this is one that I have knitted like really quick. Uh, it's the Love Note by Tinker Knits. It's a very popular pattern. Uh, I know. I, I assume that you have seen quite a lot of those, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. And actually, I've knitted another one previously for my niece, and I've also knitted another one as a baby version. So this is the third time that I'm knitting this pattern. And I really enjoy it, it's really easy to follow, it's a great pattern, it's very clear. Um, it's got like this lovely uh, lace pattern around the neck, and that's it really. There's nothing else special about it, it's just like a very basic jumper. It is fairly cropped. I did make it longer, just because I don't like like super cropped tops or sweaters. Um, but I'm really happy with the fit of this one. I have made the sleeves fairly short, like just bracelet lengths, and I find this the most comfortable because I wear the sweaters a lot at home, and when I'm like washing up. Or not washing up, but if I wash my hands or something, I really don't like having yeah, like huge sleeves. 
in the way. Um, so I like to have them like bracelet lengths and that works for me. I had a lot of fun wear, uh, knitting the sweater even though I think I knitted the yoke almost twice because I started uh, to knit it I thought oh, I'm just uh, instead of going up a size I think I wanted to go up a size, I wasn't too sure, so I just thought oh, I'm just gonna knit it with uh, bigger needles. But then I saw so basically knit like almost all the lace. Um, and then I realized that it was too see through. So instead, I just thought oh, I'm just gonna knit the same size that I knit for my knees, and it will work. And it actually works, it is quite fitted. I could have probably knit one size up, um, but I don't know, I think. I think I tried my niece's ones on and I realized that it had grown quite a bit with washing uh, so I just did the same size for me and it fits well I it is fitted it is it's got negative ease I would say just a little bit um, but yeah I'm totally fine with it I used four and a half millimeters like for the ribbing and six millimeter needles for the rest I used a very lovely yarn that I had bought in England from uh, Wiku Yarns, which is a, their da yarn dyes based in London, two girls, and they make like uh, hand dye lovely colors. Um, they've got lovely colorways in their in their shop. Uh, so I used like a merino single for that, and then I paired it with a lace weight silk mohair from La Bienname. Um, one thing I have to say, it the 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 um, silk mohair sheds a lot, like more than others. Um, I could already tell that that was the case when I knitted the one for my niece, and I didn't really think about it. I bought some more for myself because I really like the feel of it, but. I don't like that it sheds that much. It's just a little bit annoying and it, every time I wear it um, I sort of have it in my face afterwards when I'm eating or when we're like in the kitchen. <laughs> There's always some mohair flying around so that's not super nice about it. Uh, I do hope that it will stop after a bit of wear. So I've been wearing it a little bit. I haven't washed it like a second time yet so maybe that will sort it out as well. Um, maybe if it like falls a little bit um, but let's see uh, I'm uh, very happy with the feel of it it is really lovely it is warm but not too warm like the lace um, around the yoke like makes it breathable um, I usually tend to wear like tank tops below um, you could I mean you could just wear it with a bra but it is a little bit see-through so I prefer to just wear like tank tops below and that works fine with me, I just choose some that are like sort of colour matching. Um, yeah, I've got like a thing that I really don't like when you can see like like bra straps or uh, tank top straps below something. So I am a little bit perfectionist in that way that I like to have it colour matching. But I found so, found a top that works really well and I'm just wearing it with that one and it's, that's totally fine. Um, it took me some time <laughs> to finish the sleeves and actually uh, because I had to like knit the cuff about three or four times I took this project with me on a trip and uh, whilst I was busy talking to other people I uh, didn't make the sleeve decreases um, then I used the wrong needle size because I thought oh I have only like a size smaller with me it doesn't matter it did matter because I the sleeves are really tight so yeah I knitted the sleeves I think three or four times at the end like just at the cuffs but it, besides of that uh, it is a really easy pattern to follow and I totally recommend it if you like the look of it and especially if you're in the smaller sizes you will only need two skeins of the um, fingering right down and then maybe one and a half skeins of the um, lace weight yarn so if you're using 50 gram skeins so you don't use that much yarn and that's something that I really like about it um, that's the reason why I chose that one I chose to knit this one again um, and that's all that I've got to 
say about my love note. Yeah. Um, the second finished object that I have is not with me. So I will insert a picture. Um, I was invited to a wedding. I already mentioned that in my last episode. And like a few days before the wedding, I was asked by uh, the chief of bridesmaids if I had an idea where to get um, a wedding garter. And I had made a wedding garter uh, some time before. And I still had some of the uh, crochet um, yarn left. So I said, well, actually I can make one. Um, so I made the same uh, wedding garter again that I made a couple of years ago. It is the Wrapped in Lace Wedding Garter by Kirsten Holloway. It is a very easy pattern to follow, I find, and I'm not a, I'm honestly not a, um, a crocheter. I've got very basic knowledge of crocheting, um, but it is easy to follow any stitches that you don't know. You can just look them up online. Uh, one thing you have to consider, I think, like all the, the ab uh, abbreviations are uh, American crochet abbreviations. That's something you just have to keep in mind when you're doing it, because otherwise you might make some mistakes. And yeah, there's like one stitch. So the pattern is available for free. Forgot to say that there's a free pattern on her blog, but you can also purchase a pattern. I ended up purchasing a pattern just to have it like in a nicer layout and to be able to print it. It was actually really affordable. So uh, seeing as I was making it a second time, I thought I, I, it would be just worth um, purchasing it and uh, yeah, valuing the work of the designer. Um, last time I had also crocheted a little flower um, for it. Uh, but this time I decided not to and it was mainly because I was running out of time and so you can see that I added like a little ribbon to it um, you will have to use uh, some sort of um, elastic so I went to a sewing shop and found this blue elastic that worked really well and um, yeah it looked really nice Especially, and that's one thing that you should really, really do if you make this wedding garter, you have to block it and take your time with blocking it. I used over a hundred pins for this wedding garter. Um, so, what I did, I really put it into every, I think you use some sort of pico edging, I'm not too sure about the. the, the wording or about the how you call it in, in, in crocheting terms but basically I made sure to pin down um, every little corner of it and really stretch the lace and it makes such a big difference it looks so much neater it looks much more professional the only thing I'm a little bit disappointed is that some of my pins um, like uh, discolored the yarn because it is a white yarn you have to be very careful which kind of pins you use I can't remember which one they were there were just some of them I ran out of um, blocking pins and I used some other ones but I think actually it, it was my or my, my blocking pins were the ones that discolored the yarn I was really not happy about it but I didn't have any time to fix it and to be honest if you don't know it you won't, won't see it I could see it um, so it was a little bit annoying but it looked really beautiful and yeah uh, it is very easy, easy to personalize it so I used some blue yeah, uh, blue um, what is it called elastic just because it's a, a tradition to give the bride something blue but if you have like a special color that you think that would be nice for the bride then you t can totally go for it and thinking of it if you don't want to make like a wedding garter you could easily like make like a nice little headband maybe for a baby or so because with the ribbon you can ribbon you can really adjust the size of the well the, it's actually just a crochet band so uh, if you want to adjust that for maybe a baby baby's head you can easily adjust it and um, yeah I think it, it's sweet like if you want to like do it for like a photo shoot or something 
I used a very small hook, so uh, I used like 1.5 millimeter hook to make it. So yeah, you need a little bit of patience, but I think I finished it within a day. Um, it went really quick. Um, yeah, and that was mainly because I didn't have any time, so I had to hurry up. Uh, so this was the wrapped in lace wedding garter. The third finished object I have got for you, or that I want to show you, is or are some socks. So I really wanted to make some DK weight socks and I finally finished them. So I had them on my needles for a long time. I think I started them started them in December and that was so I got some yarn from my friend uh, Marina. She's a yarn dyer based in New Zealand. Um, her yarn company is called Strawberry Patches Yarn and she dye she hand dyes beautiful yarn. She sent me some um, as like a thank you because I sent her something else. <laughs> Uh, so we've been in contact for a little while and she sent me a skein of her DK weight merino sock yarn um, in the colorway Magic Dust. And I really loved the color and I knew that I wanted to make some socks for myself. So I went and had looked for a sock pattern and I found a, the pattern by the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, it is called the vanilla sock, vanilla decay socks, and it's a great pattern. It's very easy to follow. It knits up so quick. I think you can make a sock easily within a day. And I made one sock in a day, and then because they knit top down, uh, I realized that I didn't use enough yarn. I really wanted to use most of the yarn. So what I did, uh, well, I can show you first. So this is the finished sock. So I had finished a complete sock, but I think the ribby, uh, the, the leg was about probably that length. And so what I did is I uh, completely, so I, I, I weighed my sock. I remembered how much yarn I used for that part. And then I made sure that I used up like half of the ball uh, by the time I finished. Does that make sense? I probably didn't really explain it that well, but basically, yeah, I just really wanted to use up almost everything and I, I managed quite well. So I have these two socks, they are finished, so it's, they, unfortunately you can't really tell, but there's some Stellina in the sock as well, um, the colorway is called Magic Dust, and they're really lovely and soft, um, it is a superwash merino, and I just wanted something easy to wear. Um, they fit really well, uh, they're super comfy, they're a little bit tight, which I like, I mean, I don't like when they're too um, too loose. And the only difference that I made, uh, or the only modification is, I made an Eye of Partridge um, heel flap. Um, you can't really tell with the variegated yarn, but yeah, that's a, a heel flap that I love. I know my friend Fernanda, she always um, uses that for her heels and I do love to use that as well. Um, I just find them very comfortable um, to wear when they have the Eye of Partridge heel. Um, besides of that, I followed the pattern, I think, completely. Um, uh, yeah, one thing I did, I always make the heel flap a little bit longer just because, uh, yeah, I've got like a bigger ankle, um, if that makes sense. <laughs> I don't have very thin feet so I always need to make the heel flap a bit longer just to be able to like get through with my feet. And yeah, these are the finished socks. I'm so so happy with them. They are lovely. I love the colorway and because they were, have been a gift from my friend Marina, they have like a special place in my wardrobe, my sock wardrobe. Not that I have that many socks at the moment. I do need to make some more for myself because I keep on giving away my socks. So many people in my family and amongst my friends have the same shoe size than I have. So uh, very often if somebody comes around and likes my socks, I just say, oh yeah, just keep them, that's fine. And then later on I realize that I'm running out of hand knit socks. I only have like maybe five pairs or so. So, 
Um, these are all my finished objects. Uh, I think three are enough for this episode. <laughs> Uh, I could show you more, but yeah, let's keep a few for the future episodes just because I'm not knitting that much at the moment. And let's dive straight into my work in progress. And I only have um, three things on my needles. Yeah, three things. I am currently knitting another Ridari, uh, which is a pattern by Vedi Sönstotir. It is a very popular pattern. Once again, I picked one <laughs> that has been knitted many times and I actually knitted it before. So I made that one before. In my last episode, I showed you the one that I made from a boyfriend. And when I finished his, I was really jealous of um, his version. And I thought, yeah, I want one like that. I didn't really think about that we might be going outside at the same time wearing an Icelandic sweater. So. I have to make sure that I don't wear it at the same time. I don't really like to partner up with him in the same look. So I have finished his ages ago, but I am now just about to finish mine. I am currently knitting on the yoke and here it is. Okay, you can't really tell, but okay. I just started around the yoke. I have finished, so it is knit bottom up. Finish the sleeves, obviously. Otherwise, I couldn't be knitting the yoke. Um, it is knit in around, uh, knit in around, bottom up, and I'm using. There we are, uh, Pletilopi, which is unspun Icelandic wool. Um, at the moment, I've got these two colors with me, and the main color is called dark amber heather, which is really one of my favorite colors. Um, and then I've got these here. This one is called... Oh, I can't really remember what this one is called. This one is the Golden Yellow Heather. Um, I will um, link my project page down below, just so if you want to check out the, the colours that I used. But uh, yeah, it is looking good so far. I do hope that I can finish the sweater very soon, like in days. We're going on a road trip. Uh, it's just a short road trip just because we don't have that many days off uh, but we still want to see a little bit of the countryside so uh, we are hoping to get away in a couple of days and I would love to have it ready for that road trip so yeah tomorrow evening I will knit on it and see how far I get. I do love the look of it I am really happy with my color choice as well. I have been like changing the colors up a little bit. I've also added a bit of <laughs> colors over here in the yoke, for example, like this, these little crosses, they were supposed to be one color and I made them two colored, which ended up being quite a mess because like, for example, in this row, I ended up having four colors in one row. But because I'm using the Plotilopi double stranded, that meant I had to manage eight strands of Plotilopi at the same time, which was quite a handful. <laughs> I can't recommend doing that. Don't do that. If you don't want to lose patience, like I was close to ripping it back and just leaving it. And as well, the other thing that you get, it is a little bit bulky where I use that many strands at the same time. There are quite some rows where you have three colors uh, of the of the plotilope, which is already hard enough in itself because six strands of plotilope at the same time are still not easy to handle. And oh, one day break, it's just, I mean, it, it is very easy to join the yarn again, but still, uh, if you have like, four strands on it and you're having to like join another two strands together yeah it is it is not the easiest pet like a project for when it comes to color work the rest was really easy to knit i mean i knitted the sleeves and the body in, in no time but this is just taking a little bit long now so hopefully i can show you this one the next time as a finished object um, I'm really trying to finish this one as soon as I can. 
the next work in progress that I've got. Oh, I forgot to take notes about this one actually. So let me just show it to you very quickly. It is called the just quickly have a look at my <laughs> at my pattern that I always carry in my back. It's, it's called the collective shawl, I believe. Is it? Yeah, the collective shawl by Jochi Locatelli. She's one of my favorite designers. And when I saw this pattern, I thought, oh yeah, I have so much yarn in my stash. I can, of course, uh, knit this from stash. And so I started it. So I have um, made, oh, that's the right side. Yeah, that's the nicest side, there we are. So I've knitted uh, three bands of the, um, of like the brioche sec section, so it is a um, shawl. It is not that wide. It's quite long. It's more like it's more yeah. It's like a it's more like a almost like a scarf. It's not necessarily such a s traditional shawl. It's not like a triangular shawl. Um, it will get wider, but not that wide. You do um, like a mixture of increases and decreases. So. Uh, it is not constantly growing on both sides. Um, so these are like garter sections and then you have brioche sections, sections in between. And uh, the yarn that I'm using is actually some yarn that I had left over. So um, last year when I knit the, the mystery knit along from um, West Knits, I ordered uh, I think like one extra color, I can't really remember. I think there, there wasn't enough contrast, so I ordered one extra color. So this is the um, Super Soft by Holst in the colorway Cinnamon. It doesn't look, I thought it would be a little bit more red, but it's actually got quite like a, uh, yeah. There's some yellow in there as well, and a little bit of green, I would say like very light green. So I uh, also had bought like a mystery bag or something, some leftovers in green colors uh, from Holtz. And so I'm combining just some little, some little balls that I have here. So I've got some, a fade going on. It's not really a fade. I'm just combining different, different greens and kind of blues together. So this will be the initial fade like that. Um, there's not much contrast going on and that's really what I'm trying to do. Just like something that kind of goes together. But still it's not like a... It's not a super easy fade. Like this one does... Oh, it does fade a little bit. In the camera it looks actually less aggressive. Yeah, so basically you will. I will be mixing up the colors I think it's actually quite nice to have something that goes with either green or blue clothes and hopefully I can wear it in autumn time or during the autumn. At the moment I don't really wear that many shawls. It is summertime, even in Iceland. It's like 12 degrees. I've been sitting on the balcony the afternoon enjoying the sunshine. <laughs> the last work in progress that I want to show you is my Soldopna crop. It's a pattern by Caitlin Hunter and I've had this one on my needles for quite some time now, probably like four months or so. And I'm not loving it. I'll be very honest with you. So first I'm going to show it to you. It does look very sweet but it doesn't fit that well. So I've got two problems with this. First of all there's a problem with uh, the size. I think I, or actually, there's more a problem with my gauge. <laughs> so my row gauge is quite off, but my stitch gauge worked. And so I thought, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be able to block it out. And I'd probably be able to block quite a lot of it out, yes. But it is still quite stiff. And I probably should have gone up another needle size, but then, yeah, but then my stitch gauge would have been off so 
I should have probably just chose, chosen some different needles maybe to try or chosen some different yarn. <laughs> um, but here it is. It is a little bit tight around my uh, bust. Um, so I already had knitted like almost half of the body, like more of the body. Um, but then I realized that there were very few stitches that were picked up under the underarm. And it was so tight under the underarm, so I ripped it back quite a bit. Um, I've made it much longer than it was um, described in a pattern. I think I knitted like... So I, I made the yoke much longer. And then I picked up uh, quite a few more stitches up under the arm, just to give it a bit more width. And I think that worked out partly. Um, but I still have a problem with the fit of the neckline, so it looks very like there's quite. It is much looser than my my color work. That might be also a problem with my gauge. Um, so I'm thinking of leaving it like that for the moment and seeing how it works out once I've uh, washed and blocked it. If it doesn't block out, I will probably just um, yeah cut the the neckline. And knit it from so knit it up so I'll just pick up some stitches around the neckline and just try to fix it the other way around hopefully that will work I'm thinking if I should try it on maybe I should try it on let me just put it on one second all right there we are so that's the sweater on me so as you can see, oh Christ, now you can see my, <laughs> I'm wearing like a skirt and it doesn't really work that well, but you can see. Okay, the neckline actually looks much better now that I've knitted a little bit of the, of the body and I think it might work out now. So uh, I have to probably pick up a few more stitches under the arm. It is a little bit tight under the arm, but I'm thinking that I can probably stretched it a fair bit by blocking. I will have to block it out and like stretch it but I think I can fix it actually. I do love the color work around the yoke um, and the neckline yeah maybe it will fix itself by like normally the sleeves add a bit of weight onto it and then pull it out a little bit it might work actually at the end. I haven't tried it on since I've changed it and like knitted a little bit of the body. So yeah there's hope. <laughs> there's definitely hope. Um, it's not my favorite work in progress for a multitude of reasons. So the fit was really putting me off. Like uh, it took me quite some time to knit that. It is quite labor intensive. It's a th fairly thin yarn so I'm using the uh, Rosa Pomar Brusca, which is a Portuguese yarn, it's, um, it's like 50% merino, the other one I can't, so it's written in Portuguese, 100% wool, but there's two different kind of breeds, I believe, um, yeah, wools of Saloia and uh, Portuguese merino, so um, it is Portuguese wool, it's very sheepy, bit rustic it doesn't it's not itchy though it's fairly soft um, when you knit with it you get a bit of sticky hands um, at least that's what how I feel about it so there's probably quite still quite a lot of lanolin in the wool which I don't mind it smells nice you still find the occasional bit of hay in it as well and it is so with 50 grams you're getting about where was it 125 meters so i made quite a big gauge swatch um, actually i still have it here <laughs> so that's my gauge swatch uh, i swatched it in with different needles um, and i went for 3.75 millimeters i believe i think that's what i'm knitting on at the moment um, yeah, 
3.75 millimeters. So um, for me, these are like, yeah, 3.75 millimeters is sort of what I'm comfortable with knitting. I do prefer when they're a little bit bigger than needles, so I'm not gonna lie, like my six millimeter in the love note flew off the needles, whereas this is just taking a lot of time, especially because it's a combination of color work and thinner needles. But I do love the look of it, and I think now that I've seen it in the camera, I think I will make a little bit of more effort to finish that rather, rather sooner. I really want to get this off my needles. It's been a work in progress for way too long, so yeah. Um, I hope I can like maybe get it done after I finish my Ridari. I will try to just work on that one. Having said that now, I think if I remember right, yesterday night before going to bed, I signed up to another test knit. I kind of hope that they won't choose me. If they choose me, it will be nice, so because I really like the top that I applied for, so to knit, but if they don't, then I will concentrate on my current ribs. Let me just get back into my love note. <laughs> Here I am, back in my love note, that's comfortable. Um, one thing I can recommend as well, you've probably seen it in different uh, knitting podcasts, but um, what I love to use uh, to try on my sweaters while I still have them on my needles are these, um, I think they're called barber poles. Are they called barber poles? Christ. These are basically like hollow um, plastic um, strings. You can get them fairly cheap, I believe, in like craft uh, stores. Or you can pay a lot of money and buy them from knitting shops. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to offend anybody, but yeah, they are very expensive if you buy them from certain shops. I had them in like a a knitting notion advent calendar and yeah, they're great. I love them. Um, sometimes they stay on really well, some others they don't. I do knit mostly with metal needles, so they should really stay on almost all the time. Um, but yeah, they don't always do that. So sometimes I still lose some stitches um, and sometimes I have a really hard time getting them off the needles. <laughs> so I don't really know why. It, it doesn't really matter which size of needles. Sometimes it might just be that some, some are a little bit worn off. Maybe I have to cut them. You could easily just cut them with some sharp uh, scissors and uh, yeah, make them straight again because they uh, wear out when you use them a lot. Um, and one thing that I forgot to mention about the Love Note, oh sorry, Love Note, no, Sold Out Nakura. Um, there are some modica modifications that I did. So I saw that on the original pattern, the beginning of the round, round is in the middle of the back. And, sorry, some more hair. Uh, so you will see that on a lot of finished object pictures, and actually the one, even the pattern picture, you will see that the color changes, so the beginning of the round is straight in the middle of the back. And I really don't like it. I have to say, it's something that I really dislike. <laughs> Probably because I've knit a lot of Icelandic sweaters and they always have the beginning of the round on the left side, on the left back shoulder. And it is because it hides the beginning of the round much better than having it in the middle of the back. Because it really stands out. And you might be able to like uh, use some techniques to make the beginning of the round less obvious. But I do still feel like it is a lot of work. Whereas you could easily just make the beginning of the round uh, just on the back, left back shoulder. It is a little bit more complicated because you will have to, uh, or the designer has to rethink when it comes to uh, doing the short rows. So what I did is I followed the pattern down to the short rows. I did the short rows, and then I um, made a calculation. So I found out how many stitches. Uh, would be going onto the sleeve, some of these switches would be going to the front. And then I used like, I used a percentage, so I used a percentage to find out at how many stitches approximately 
it didn't quite work out that way because the the the, the stitch count wasn't um, yeah it, it, the proportions didn't work out that well but approximately I had the beginning of the round somewhere on the left shoulder no back right oh because I'm knitting from top down it is on the back right shoulder yeah so it should be somewhere here but I think you can't really tell you can maybe see it here a little bit but besides of that it is really hard to tell where the beginning of the round is whereas if you go onto the round page you will see it very clearly on the back maybe it's just me but I really didn't like the look of it so I changed it and I'm really happy that I did because I do think it makes it look much neater the other thing um, that I wasn't too happy about is that she has the the in, uh, the increases yeah there are increases they, she has them staggered on top of each other and this also makes the lines that you have here um, they are kind of interrupted so what I did is I changed it so I I've, I completely freestyled there's no technique behind it but I was I, I just changed the increases to not be on top of each other because there are some followed I think like in every round or something like that and they're fairly obvious to see because they kind of break up the color work whereas just by placing them not on top of each other but kind of like a few stitches apart I find the look is much neater and yeah something that is easy to do um, it doesn't change the color work I believe um, but it looks neater so these are a few things uh, that I did different and overall yes I mean it's absolutely lovely I love the color work I'm not too happy about the fit and I had some feedback as well on my Instagram the other day I posted a picture and quite a few have posted that you had similar problems with this pattern or know people who had similar problems with this pattern especially regarding the neckline so that's a little bit of a shame but i think if you like the the, the color work you can certainly make it work but it is not a beginner's friendly pattern in regards of making modifications so maybe something to keep in mind i think there are more beginner friendly patterns out there that are easier to modify um yeah so hopefully I will have finished maybe the body by next time I film an episode um, and I have enough yarn or should have enough yarn to maybe make the sleeves longer hopefully full length sleeves I bought some more yarn unfortunately it's not the same dye lot than for the body so it will be looking a little bit different but I hope that uh, it will not be that obvious because I'm using some or it is a full color work uh, pattern so that should work out well if you want to see my floats I know some people want to see the floats so here we are they're looking good so far I think I didn't weave in that many I think the color um, the, 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 there are only like a few stitches apart maybe three four stitches maybe so I don't think I caught I was like catching my floats not that I recall of maybe no no I don't think I did so yeah all right I'm gonna stop talking about this now <laughs> I promise uh, so these were all my works in progress and I the, the shawl is actually something just I just wanted something easy to work on uh, so I pick it up anytime I don't want to concentrate and then the other two I really want to finish I've only got one acquisition I've been behaving myself quite fairly well uh, but the other day I went to a local yarn store so there's so many local yarn stores around and I've been to quite a few of them um, and then I went to one store just to ask something because I want to use my spinning wheel and I went there because I saw that they had a spinning wheel uh, in the yarn shop so I went there and she was so kind and recommended me a place where I could maybe get some lessons 
And then I came across this lovely sock yarn and because I had just finished my DK weight socks and I realized that I really love knitting DK weight. Oof, I hate myself. <laughs> I realized that I really love uh, knitting DK weight socks. I thought it would be a good idea to buy some more DK weight sock yarn because I don't have any. I could just use double or double strand my DK weight or my sock yarn. I could do that, but what's the fun about that? So, I've been behaving myself fairly well. I didn't buy much yarn, but I did buy this one. So it's an Icelandic Lamps wool. It is a sock yarn DK weight. Um, it is a 90%, 98% new wool. Um, it's Icelandic Lamps wool and then 2% of silk. Here it is. It is called... It is called Cutler. I think you should be able to see it now. There we are. Um, it is a lovely yarn. It's quite rustic. I'm not gonna lie. It is quite rustic. <laughs> um, but I do hope that it is uh, quite hard wearing because I will want. I want to make some socks for myself because I uh, have recently started uh, horse riding again, and I need some yeah some warm socks. DK weight socks are perfect for that and I didn't want to have anything too fancy or too soft. I really want some hard wearing woolen socks and I do hope that these will wear well. I have high hopes in this one. Uh, it is, it's got a high twist and it's recommended to for socks so yeah I do believe that could work. It is a yarn from Helen uh, Magnusson. You probably know Helen Magnusson because she has designed the Amaya cardigan, which is a very popular um, cardigan. Uh, knit, I think uh, Laura from Penrose Knits uh, made that one. I know that Fernanda made that one as well uh, from Little Monkeys and Me. And then I think the. Um, Rebecca from the Queer Bear podcast. I think she made that one as well. I think she made it two colored only. So it is a really lovely um, uh, color work cardigan. Um, it is steeped, I believe. Um, but it is lovely and uh, it looks absolutely beautiful. It's been on my list for quite some time because I actually I have so much leftovers of the um, Little OP in different colors. So I was been thinking, oh, I should really just make like a leftover card again, and that would work quite well. But so far I haven't done it. I might do it one day, I don't know. I do have a lot of Little OP scraps and Alpha OP scraps. Yeah, I do have to find a project for all these scraps because they're not really scraps, they're, they're just like, small quantities of leftovers. Yeah. Uh, so this is the only acquisition that I have. Um, not much more to say about that. Uh, I do think like the newer versions of this yarn, so I think uh, the new ones are 100% lamb's wool. This one has 2% silk in it, but uh, I don't think she continued doing that. I might be wrong. I will link you the website down below as well if you want to click on that. It's um, very interesting. So she, she sends this yarn to Italy to have it uh, dyed there. And, uh, sorry, not dyed. She, I'm not sure where she has it dyed. But she sends it there to have it spun in Italy. Because in Iceland there's no mill that can make such um, thin sock yarn. Uh, I believe. That's what I gathered from her website. Um, so yeah, I will uh, make some socks. Some probably what I'm probably gonna do this time. I'm gonna make some uh, top socks and just knit as long as I can. I will divide this strand into 50 gram balls and then knit two at the same time. That's the idea. And do magic loop. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then I will report how they wear. Uh, recommendations. So I have two podcasts to recommend. One that I just came across literally before filming this episode. I was sitting and uh, putting nail polish on. <laughs> Something that I like doing when I have quite a minute. 
And I was uh, watching the first episode of Cookie Knits. She is, um, I think you say her name, her name is Ira. She is Nepalese, but she lives in Sydney now. So she has only got one uh, episode out. And the reason why I clicked on her podcast is because she wore this absolutely stunning, um, it's like a ripped um, sweater. I think it's called the Botanical Yoke Pullover. And it's a pattern by Purcell. Or it's absolutely stunning. She said she didn't like knitting it and I kind of, I can imagine that it's a lot of work, but it looked amazing. So one of the reasons why I clicked on it and she was lovely to watch and I'm sure her next episodes will be nice as well. And then the other one that I really wanted to mention for quite some time now, since I've seen that she has a podcast, is uh, the podcast of uh, Hannah from Her Begun Where she, I've knitted one of her tops. Don't recall out of the top of my head what she heard the top is that I made, but uh, yeah, she's a she's a lovely designer. She's um, German. I have been in contact with her private as well. Uh, she's really she, uh, just a really lovely person, and her um, podcasts are very informative. So she's not only doing like the normal. Uh, whips, FOs, but she's also talking about uh, techniques and so she always has like a highlight for each uh, episode and she talks about why you should swatch and other topics. I'm not going to say too much about it, just go and check her out. It's totally worth uh, going there. Her uh, podcasts have uh, yeah, a good, um, good value, let's say like that. Okay. So that's all I have to talk about for this episode. I have to kind of hurry up because I need to get to bed soon. I have an early shift tomorrow morning. I want to be well rested. Um, I do like to get eight hours of sleep, no matter what time I have to get up, which means I have to go to bed very early. It is especially hard at the moment because it is very light outside. It's not getting dark anymore. Um, it's summertime in Iceland, which means, yeah, the sun doesn't really, so it still sets, but it doesn't really get dark anymore. And we're coming close, well, we're now 22 days away from the longest day of the month, of the year. Um, and I do love the summertime. I absolutely love the, the long days, but I've, it is hard to get enough sleep. Um, one thing that helps though is when you're exposed to sunlight, you do have more energy as well. So if you get it, like when I get up early in the morning at 3.30, 4 o'clock, uh, it's not that bad because it's light outside. So it is different than getting up in the winter time when it's dark and cold. Now it's bright, it's still a bit fresh, but it is summer. So a sunny day in Iceland of like 12, 15 degrees does feel much hotter, especially if you're sheltered from the wind, you can actually easily wear short sleeve t-shirts. I've been sitting on the balcony with in bikini already. So uh, yeah, maybe I'm adapting to the temperature or maybe it is much hotter than uh, it feels like. No, that doesn't make sense. Maybe it's it feels hotter than it is. Yeah. Uh, I have been, besides of um, working, I've been working for a fair bit, I've uh, also started to um, horse ride again. So I used to horse ride quite a lot when I was younger. Excuse me, there's a dog outside. Um, yeah, I used to horse ride quite a bit when I was younger and I've picked that up again and it's a lovely hobby. It gets me out of the house, I get to enjoy some fresh air, which I appreciate so much. I love being outside, I love being in the countryside and just spending some time offline as well. It's just nice uh, to kind of, yeah, connect with nature and let, yeah, relax. That's probably, I, I relax a lot when I'm going horse riding, so that's lovely. Uh, I've also started to run again, I picked up running. I used to run quite a bit or like I always go running for like 
over certain periods of times and then I stop again and I start again. So I'm trying to get into like habits of or the habit of running regularly again, which always does me good. I mean, physical exercise is so good. Um, you have more energy and you feel so much better. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try to do that more regularly. And yeah, with a full-time job and quite a few hobbies, yeah, knitting is not on my top, top of the priorities at the moment, but I do still enjoy it and therefore I will be coming back. Maybe not as quick as I used to, so it will be probably like every four weeks maybe or so. There's no stress. I just hope that you enjoy this, uh, these episodes and yeah, just let me know um, what you're knitting on. I love seeing your projects, honestly, every time I do find it quite uh, an inspiration to see what intricate patterns you're following or what you're making. And until the next time, I hope you take care of yourselves and have a lovely summer. Enjoy the longer days if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, yeah, the shortest day will be <laughs> coming soon. So uh, you're looking forward to, or maybe you're enjoying the winter time, maybe you do. But uh, I'm certainly a summer person, so I'm still enjoying the long days until June and then... <laughs> will be counting down again for summer. Never mind. All right, I'll leave you with that. Until the next episode, take care and keep on knitting. Bye-bye.